Good morning everybody. Now last night we had a really bad cold, frosty night. So I'm just coming down inspecting to see what's been uh, what's been hit. You can see that it got down to minus three last night and we had a bit of snow. Had a bit of snow on. Here's the top bed. All the garlic's fine by the look of it. Even the stuff in the buckets. After I tidy up, we've got a special guest star coming down today, so uh, I'll have to make the paths clear and all that kind of stuff. The broad beans have been bitten. Look. The broad beans have been bitten. Never got a chance to come down and fleece up because I was down in Windsor yesterday picking up Daryl's kids. More important than a few than a handful of beans, isn't it? Um, peas looking all right. Winter Wonderland, second week of April, eleventh of April. Oh dear. Yeah, they've been battered. I'll have to try and find a more sheltered yet still sunny spot for that. I'm going to have to deadhead, deadhead all those um, daffodils in the Grape hyacinths coming through okay, the underneath. That's alright, it's alright. It's not been, not been too bad, has it, guys? The beets and the chard are pretty hardy, so they'll take a, a little bit of punishment. As with the onions and the garlic, so we're all right. And it should melt off today. It's going to get up to about uh, 10 degrees. And it is pretty sunny at the moment, but it's these clear skies. The clear skies are not going to be uh, providing any blanket of heat retention of a night time so it'll be warm through the day but it'll all escape into the uh, into the universe at night because we've no cloud cover yeah they're all right see the ice on the top Uh, brassicas are all right and the purple sprouting broccoli over that side winter boar kale as the name suggests is pretty hardy and it's been inside the greenhouse it's been protected from the wind the icy wind which is a good thing isn't it all right let's just check the lady farmers Polytunnel, Tiki Tunnel 2. Everything in here should be alright. Although we have got I may have got the potatoes in here. Spring cabbage is okay, although it's bolting, bolting. Got the florets at the top. This lot does need to go out. Certainly the bigger ones do need to go out. We need to get planted out. I'm going to see if I can do that today. These can stand another week or two. Ah, got some action in the buckets. <coughs> Charlotte's coming through. And the free potatoes are coming through. Going through in abundance. That was the mole, the mole hills. The soil in there is from the mole hills. So obviously there's plenty of weed in there, which I'll, I'll have to prick out, but uh, the weed seeds. But the spuds are coming through okay by the look of it, aren't they? And they're not bitten by the frost, which is good. No evidence of blackening. When they get bitten by the frost, they go all black and uh, mushy. The frost got them. 
but we've been uh, been lucky there really it actually shows that the greenhouse the polytunnel greenhouse is working doesn't it because it's keeping that frost bite away <coughs> don't get me wrong if it drops down seriously low like if we get minus 10 things like that it's still going to get inside here and uh, and do the damage but a mild frost of about minus three it'll be kept above freezing inside here and that's what you want for your tenders let's see how many tomatoes are doing now my tomatoes were, du were double protected so they're inside the big greenhouse holy tunnel tiki tunnel mark one see these are broad beans that I, that I didn't put out and they're fine look not a problem at all with those broad beans <coughs> Let's have a look at this cold frame. Yep, yeah, sweet corn's all right. That can be uh, blitzed by the frost if you're not careful. The peppers, again, a delicate tropical. And cucumbers. All the cucumbers have come through, look there. Tasty king. Yeah, so those were planted. The four there that you can see, they were planted about 10 days before these ones. 31st of the 3rd, so that's only 11 days ago. When were these ones planted? This is tricky with one hand. Got to be careful, boys and girls. 9th of the 3rd. So that was three weeks before. Yeah, they were three weeks before those ones. Anyway, they're alright, that's good. And all my tomatoes and chilies are untouched. In fact, they're looking pretty good, them. Looking fine and dandy. Everything else in here is okay. The sweet peas definitely need to go out. Trizia, wild rocket, that's fine. Spring onion's fine. Looking a bit spindly and spangly those, aren't they? We'll see. We'll see how they get on. Yep. Jobs are good. There we are. That's what we're after. You find them in the Tesco's compound, you always have to ask first. Ask if you can have them. And they'll say generally, yes i've never been refused them and uh, the, as you can see they're the quite deep buckets nothing particularly pretty about them but the shape of them is good because you can get them quite closely spaced together and uh, create a bed with those tesco's Okay, so our special guest star, who's going to be arriving later on, wanted some buckets, and I offered to give her some buckets. There's 20 of the uh, sort of 11 inch deep buckets, of the 9 inch deep, there's 6 there, and then these big Tesco ones which are sort of uh, 11 inches deep, 11 inches square. I think it's 11 by 10 or something like that. I'll measure them. Make sure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. Are those? So 14 and 6 is 20, and another 20 of those. That's 40 buckets for our little friend. People are struggling to get all of these Asda and Tesco cut flower buckets. But As I say, we, we, we have a plethora of them. We pick them up every, to, at every one that we go to. I'm going to... Uh, it's the smaller Tesco's, like the Tesco Express and, and the smaller Asda uh, stores that are near to us and we just we just ask for them like you saw before they, they put them in the compounds 
and uh, they just get tipped off generally it's it's ready cycled it's always it's already been recycled the plastic that they uh, that they make them out of and so they can only really do that once um, before it becomes useless as a plastic so uh, yeah let's get rid of them so we reuse them we re reuse and repurpose them as uh, as growing buckets let me just show you what mixed on next door with them now as you can see there he's got uh, 15 of the Tesco buckets in and all he's done is to sort of hold them all together put a single frame of two single frame of two by two around them and there you've got a grow bed haven't you so they were free the two by two might have probably cost him about six quid or something like that with the screws and you've got a raised bed which and it's a raised bed that can be it doesn't have to be fixed there it isn't fixed there you can move that about you know all you have to do is push down Oh, yeah, I think a couple of screws are screwed through into the buckets, but you just remove those, push down the skirt, and you can move the buckets wherever you want to move them to. And um, I think it's a cracking idea. I think he's doing sweet corn in there. I think he's having sweet corn, one in each sort of thing. But you can, uh, you can do them with potatoes. We're going to be doing them with, with potatoes, probably at the end of this bed here. That bed, we've got that space. So I'm going to be putting the, um, I'll probably put them too deep. Instead of it being three, I'll put it too deep. And we can have uh, ten potato plants growing on the end of that bed. And if we need to move them, we can move them, can't we? I need to finish that off, actually. Joe keeps telling me off for not finishing things off, and he's right. So I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I'm going to finish that job off. Joe says you have to you always complete your jobs, Tony. You leave them half done, and he's correct. So all these are going to be um, drilled for drainage holes. In each one of the bigger buckets there, you're probably going to get nine drainage holes in the 8mm metal bit that we're using. And in these ones, they're going to be having um, probably six or something like that. We'll see how we go. With these buckets, they're sort of segmented at the bottom, you'll see they've got these segments so there'll be one two three let me just get this right one two three there'll be eight drainage holes in that and probably nine drainage holes in that one in each one of them and all you do is might as well try and do it now actually flip those over like that get your drill driver And I'll do that all the way around. Do one, miss one, do one, miss one. All the way around. And then on the inside, on these inner segments, I'll be doing the same thing. But where I've drilled there, I'll be drilling there instead. Yeah. And I've just done all six at once there. I keep getting in, in my own shadow, don't I? Sorry about that, guys. I've just done all six at once there. And the depth that you will be able to do is about that. So we're probably covering about eight. But I'm going to do them, these ones I'm going to do, uh, split them into fives. So, uh, yeah. I'll have, I'll have four sections of drilling to do, basically, to get all 20 done. It's not rocket science, guys, is it? But that's your drainage. You need the drainage, otherwise you're going to get waterlogged and, uh, and it won't be any good at all. But you do need that drainage in there. I've just made that while I was waiting for my coffee to cool down. It's called a Bjorn, Bjorn folding table. b and bargains, 15 quid. I've decided to move into the uh, Lady Farmer's Greenhouse for a bit. I'm going to water them spuds and I'm going to top them off with some more compost, I think. Because they are bursting through now. But yeah, be alright for me coffee and what have you, wouldn't it? A little occasional table, that comes off. it folds obviously excellent camera excellent camera work as usual guys guys and gals and then when I want it I can just go like that fiddling about 
but that pops on top and you got yourself a little table my friend yeah just waiting for our special guest but she's going to be about three uh, about two o'clock i think this afternoon so i'm going to get some more work done work 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 you never stuck for a job down here now if you look to the side we've got our brassicas there and they're suffering a little suffering a little bit now in here we're getting decently warm days but we're getting cold nights so i think we can get these out only problem is is the beds that i've got that are free at the moment are the beds that we had the um the root problems with yeah club root problems with which isn't good for brassicas so what i'm going to be doing i think is in the buckets like we've got over there so i'm going to be using the square buckets planting them on into the square buckets and then putting them under the netting so that they're raised above the um the club root ground I'm going to lime the club root ground thoroughly and kind of leave it fallow but we're going to get the crops in inside the, the, the buckets, the raised up buckets. Only issue with that is, is because I'm raising them up, they're going to be raised up by about 10 inches. The head grow room is going to be a bit of an issue. So with me, uh, with me cabbages and uh, my pack choy that's what i'm going to do but with the other brassicas i'm going to have to come up with a, the taller brassicas i'm going to have to come up with a better solution than that mm. anyway let's clear the bed out i'm going to be looking at bradley's cage i think i'm going to clear all the weeds out of that and prepare that for accepting these let's crack on okay so at the moment bradley's cage is full of glorious weeds the little fella did make an attempt a couple of weeks ago to clear out the weeds, but it's too big of a job for him. He's only, he's only little, he's only four. So Daddy's going to do it for him. Right, I'll see you in half an hour. You see that? That's a slug's egg. And that's not desirable. Whenever you're coming across, you're doing your weeding like this, just have a quick look through for slugs' eggs, slugs' eggs, and dispatch them wherever you find them. We're going to be showing you what we're going to be, uh, what treatment we're going to be using for the slugs this year. So stay tuned for that, that's going to be at the end. And uh, we've got our fingers crossed that it's going to be effective. Because slugs are the devil's invertebrate. The devil's the invertebrate. That's what the slugs are. Snails are a bit cuter, so they, they, they don't tend to get as much of a pogrom from me. But the slugs and the snails are going to be treated um, to the Namo slug treatment, which will be coming up shortly. I'll show you that later on. I'll show you the actual substance we're going to be using. Okay, well, Bradley. Daddy's done the, the weeding. I've got all the uh, sort of annual weeds that have grown up on top of it. We've still got horse's tail and bind weed in there bind weed but there's not a great deal I can do about that because we're organic uh, and so that will pop through Let's see if I can find some for you if I just rummage under here I bet I can find a couple of the uh, look there's one that's bind weed and the rhizomes will grow throughout the soil really and just pop up as they see fit and as they do we try and chop the heads off as soon as they show the faces but yeah it's a bit of a battle of attrition that anyway we've got the lime 
We haven't had any club root issues in Bradley's cage thus far, and we don't want any club root issues, so I'm going to lime the soil, because the lime, the garden lime, will assist in uh, suppressing the club root. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just going to spread this about, wearing a pair of gloves, rubber gloves. Okay, so a fairly liberal, liberal dusting there of the garden lime. I'll say probably use about two pounds, or uh, about, about a good three quarters of a kilo, if you're going to do it in the kilos, in the metric. And now I'm going to rake that in. That's dusted on the surface. I'm just going to rake that in, starting from the top end and working my way down. And then the rainwater will wash it all in and, uh, and send it down into the soil. And hopefully then, for next time, back end of the year, we're going to probably put some winter uh, brassicas in there. Okay. And when we do that, um, the lime's already in the ground. We always add a teaspoon of lime when we do plant up the, uh, the brassicas anyway. Put a teaspoon of lime into the planting position and uh, let the roots grow through that. And you find then that you get uh, substantially less in the way of issues with club root. Have a look at club root. There is a, uh, a video on club root. If I can find it, I'll put it in the description below, but yeah. All right. You don't want that on your brassicas. There you go, Chrissy. There's your bed. Exploring nature together, Chrissy. Check her out. She wanted a bed for when she stays over here. And I think that'll do, mate. Probably get about four people in there, actually. <coughs> so that should be all right for um, for the fall, for autumn get more brassicas in there get the overwintering stuff in okay now I've got a double layer of the weed membrane a double layer of weed membrane underneath those uh, OSB boards which the OSB boards for, formed the old uh, blueberry box the blueberry bed that was formerly here so instead of scrapping them off I'm, what I'm doing is I'm giving it an extra layer <laughs> Excuse me, just bear with us a second. Thought I was going to sneeze then, but didn't. So that's uh, four feet by six feet, I think, or just over six feet. Just measured it there, actually. I think the inner is six feet. So yeah, it's just above six feet. I'll just sort this out now, me. Uh, Tape measure. So you've got the double layer of weed membrane underneath the sort of three quarter inch OSB board. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach that front piece there, which isn't quite as deep. And there's going to be an inch gap, which I will fill with the scrap wood. And then I'm going to put another double layer of weed membrane stapled to the inside of that, but I'm going to attach it to um, Bradley's cage at the back there. We spoke the other day about having this as a um, a sweet corn bed, and it's going to be a sweet corn bed this year. But also, we're going to uh, have the buckets, have those square buckets, the Tesco buckets. Probably get about five in at the front there, uh, with potatoes in. Doesn't look like it's spinning fast that, but it really is. It's the flicker rate on the camera. That's mixed wind turbine. Anyway, let's crack on with this little project. So we've just hit a little bit of a hitch. If you look at the width of this, it's about two inches, which means that using a standard screw, that's the, these are the only sorts of screws I've got at the moment. It won't actually go through and attach to to what's behind it but fear not dear viewer we've got this so what I'm gonna do is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a a couple of sort of like one inch holes and then follow the screws through there are we getting that yeah a couple of one inch holes so uh, the depth is gonna be reduced so two of, it, two of each all the way around 
and jobs are good. And oh yeah. So I don't want to go too far in. So all I've done is I put a bit of bit of tape round there, tape round the drill bit. So that's an inch. That's as far as I want to go in. So I just drill to the depth of that. Top tips. All right. So there's the timber behind. So we want to follow that. And all I'll do is. Go to the depth of that twice. Okay. And then I'll find my other drill driver. Here we go, exhibit B. Then all we need to do is fire the screws in then to the countersunk holes. Countersunk that me that is. So I've cut away, or I've countersunk. <laughs> and that should hold them. Okay, now as you can see, there's a bit of gapping around. There's a gap between the bottom and the top, which is about probably about an inch and a half, something like that. But luckily, we've got a load of this pallet wood which should just do the job. So I'm gonna fill that gap with the pallet wood. I think our guest has arrived. Let's go and check it out. No, where is she? It's the shield maiden of the north, whatever she is. There she is. Don't swear you're on candid camera. <laughs> I can bear in gifts. Shield maiden of the north has arrived. Let's get her in. <laughs> Are you all right, mate? Alright. Hiya Julia. I'll just all take right, you down, well. love. <laughs> Look what we've got. Right, okay, I've Julia, the lovely Julia, is bearing gifts. And we are our regulation two metres apart. We are? And we're outside, even though we're in the We're probably about seven and a half foot here. Yeah, fair distance. So Black Russian tomato. Okay. Um quite a dark reddish chestnutty over its shoulders tomato it's got quite nice savoury sort of taste to it and that's grown from seed that I saved from my black Russians last year and it's a uh, it's uh yeah cordon a cordon yeah so uh, so we'll be pinching out you could probably get I was talking the other day and telling them about pinching out plant. yeah I, I do that all the time yeah came so further you, plants you probably get another three or four plants out of it once you take all these bits out of it so that's oh, that big one. stretch got it all right let's put him here this is a citrina bell pepper. Okay. So sweet, sweet pepper. Uh, I've not tried it, but I grew a lot of them, this, so I thought you might quite like one of them. But it's supposed to be quite a nice sweet, sweet yellow pepper with crunchy flesh, apparently. Right, so it's, and it is a bell pepper then? It is, yeah, sweet pepper. We like the bell peppers. We like the bell peppers and the corn or Toro Russells. I've never managed to get a decent corn or the Toro Russell. No, Mick, Mick last year got, they were about 18 inch. That's ridiculous because. But mine got attacked by some like critter. Terrible. This one is what I like to call my just right chilli. It All was, right. Um, chilli pepper from the supermarket and it was not too hot, not too mild, and very tasty. Free chilli. Free chilli. Free chilli from Julia. Actually, there's two plants in there and I've just left them growing together because they say chilies like to hold hands, don't they? So, so you, they can't hold hands tighter than that. <laughs> is it like a mystery one then, that one? You don't I, know the I exact no species? Idea. Yeah, no idea what species it is. But the pepper itself was probably about that long. Right. And it was quite a, a short, fat one. And it was red. And it was it was just, a, that's why I've called it the Just Right Chilli, because it was just right. So it wasn't too hot, wasn't too No, it didn't cool. really red off, but it added just a nice little bit of gentle heat to the cooking, so it was really nice. So. Well, that'll add a bit of a spicy variety to our mix. It'll because... be interesting to see if it comes back true, because I've got some of these as well, so it'd be quite interesting to right. see. Because I have no idea if that original chilli was might like, have been an F1. it might have been an F1, so I have no idea. But they all seem to look the same as they're growing, so fingers crossed. Right, cool, that's brilliant, that's that. Thank you very much. We'll put him there with the rest. And this. Last one. A mating purr, very, very rare in the wild, isn't it? In, in captivity. <laughs> uh, Beth Alpha Cucumber 
that. Oh, right. That's great, that, because we want the cucumbers. Just I've got about eight at the moment. Small cucumbers, about six inches long, and they're really nice. Small, but very tasty and fresh. A bit like you, Julia, that, isn't it? Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> so are they, they could be all right, probably, for pickling, couldn't they, if you get a, small, a couple of small ones yeah, off Yeah, if it. you were to pick them small. But I, I just like them as a normal cucumber. They taste amazing. Right, well, oh, that's fantastic. Loads of flavour. I'll get them these actually in the big greenhouse over there. And um, what well, bloody hell and more? Seeds. Uh, some Greek gigantes butter bean seeds. Greek gigantes oh, butter beans. Yeah, and they're amazing. They're amazing. I Do you know I've so never grown beans. butter beans? I never had done until last year, but those are seeds that I saved from last year's crop and uh, they're lovely. So those are your safe seeds, and yeah, how did they do last year? Did you get plenty yeah, of them? tons. My freezer were full of them. We were eating them all the time, freezer were full of them. I've saved, well, I've saved loads of seeds, so you've got some at seeds. Oh, marvellous, mate. Thank you very much. Um, Butter beans, that's, I'm going to put them there, and I'm going to plant them, I'm going to start them off. So those are just a few little gifts for you. Thank you very much. Thank so you. you've been cracking on, haven't you, on yours? Yeah, yeah, been getting plenty done. You know, as much as I can. My knees are duff these days. I've got some, um, osteoarthritis in my knees, so oh, some days great. it's really painful and I can't. Um, can barely walk some days, but other days I'm fine. So Get the, uh, well it's cod's liver oil and, and turmeric, that's what you yeah, want. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about getting the turmeric going on. And uh, I have the arthritis said, in this wrist and it helps a lot. Yeah, somebody else said, uh, organic apple cider vinegar, one capful in some fruit juice every day helps as well apparently. It's supposed to be I'm really good for you, isn't it? So uh, you'll be on the Braggs, will you? Braggs, Braggs um, apple cider vinegar. That's the popular yeah. one, but I'm sure. That, be the cloudy one. That's sure, it. Aldi does it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got to have. It's, it's called the mother. Yes, that's in it. the it's vinegar. Like the it's in like it. the yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, the actual. Um, I'm gonna find it with that in. So once I do, I'll be on that. And, I'll, and of course, the good old losing weight is going to help, which we're cracking on with getting there. My mum's. <laughs> She she's had trouble with the knee, like, and yeah. only the one. But she she was she started off in one, and it's moved to the other one as well. Right. So, um... Oh well. <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> well, we've, we've been going around garden. Phil's been like, uh, "Do you think we'll need to raise these beds?" And I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> and we'll need to make the paths more level for me. But it'll be fine. I mean, at once it'll be fine. I'll cope with it. Yeah, you've got to, haven't you? You've got to crack on, haven't you? Yeah. It'll just make me slow down a bit and see things a bit better. Eh? Might do. If I'm not going ten, ten to dozen all the time, slow down. Have well, I'll have some. I'll give you some leafy greens today. I'm going to give Julia some of the. Well, they, these have started to bolt, but if you look where the, where the flowering tips are when they yeah. do bolt, it's uh, like purple sprouting. Bro it's like sprouting broccoli, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? That's what, just what? that's just spring cabbage, but spring cabbage. That one's not too they bad. I'll give you that one. Tasty. Yeah, you can eat yeah. all of it, can't you? All the yeah. lot. The whole lot will be ed edible. Because that's what we used as half of the soup that I did the other week. Do you know oh, when I yeah. did that um, garlic, wild garlic soup? Yeah. That was half that and half the wild garlic. And it was gorgeous, that soup. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> right. I'll just pause us there for a minute while we just have a mooch and a chat and a, and a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> She's back on plot. What does it say on your mug? It says... It's time for a cuppa. And it certainly was a very good cup of coffee. <laughs> So I'm just going to show, Julia's come down today just to see us, obviously, but also uh, I've set aside some buckets. Very kindly. For bucket growing. What do you fancy doing in them? I know you want to do potatoes, is there yeah, anything I'm else? Yeah, I'm doing potatoes, but also what, your suggestion, doing some cabbage in them so that I can shove them around garden. Yeah, them. move them around. We've just actually been talking about Bradley's cage. We have. So I actually mentioned it earlier on when I was weeding it. It's been on before, but now we've levelled it all levelled it all off. I'm going to put two layers of weed membrane as well on top of that, and then put those square buckets with the brassicas in. I think it'll work. That I won't it? Work really I think it'll be a good one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let, let, let your ground have a rest for a minute. Let it have a rest. Let it go fallow, so we don't have the issues potentially with the club root. So we have a look at your buckets. Let's have a look at my buckets. Come on. Look at our gl glamorous assistant there, there she is, with the buckets. With my buckets, fantastic they are, just what I need. Now how many have I give you there with those, uh, those square ones? Uh, two, four, six. There's only ten there, ten. tight gate, aren't I? Hey. 
So the, uh, yeah, cheers, one for every butter bean seed that I've just given you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, one for butter bean seed. Now, there's, I think there's a few of the oh, yeah. of the smaller ones. Yeah, I think there's six of the smaller ones, yeah. which will be all right for your brassicas and whatnot. But then there's 20 there for the spuds. The longer ones. So, nice yeah. As you can see, there's about two or three inch, well, a couple of inches really difference, isn't there, between that one and that one. The width's the same, yeah. more or less, isn't it? But then you've got your... Yeah, Knock it on, isn't it? Yeah. So I think they're like the 10 inch uh, cut flower buckets that we get for Mazda. So there's 20 of them, so you'll be all right. It's pre-drilled for me. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. It's all part of the service you come to expect from Guru Mafinda, that. Um, so there's 20 of them, there's 6 of them, there's 10 of them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you another 5 of them so you can oh, do like, sure, yeah, them. do like what Mick's got next door. I can always get them, you see, you can't, you struggle to get yeah, them, don't get you? Them. I've tried. Yeah, they're hard work, aren't they? Not. <laughs> Is that at the big test goes, yeah. that? That's pretty really miserable they gets, aren't they? have got somebody else there that uses them. But... Possibly, yeah. They might, they, their own um, staff might be nicking them, yeah. you never know. Well, they, Utilising them. <laughs> Utilising them for something, aren't yeah. they? They're doing something with them. Yeah, I bet there's a black market of black buckets. They're great. I, was just I should get a stall on Wigan Market, shouldn't I? Should, yeah. The Guru's bucket stall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stop giving them to you if you did that. <laughs> I know. That's how much you get. <laughs> right, let's crack on. Okay, boys and girls. It's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from her. <laughs> So don't forget to check her out. It's you would you well tell them tell them who you are. Julia's garden diary. Julia's garden garden diary. Gardening not gardening. Diary. Gardening. I thought yeah. it was gardening. She doesn't know who she is. Julia's gardening diary. <laughs> right. So it's Julia's gardening diary. Uh, me guru Mafinda. I actually recommend Julia. She's always up to something, and it's usually very good, exciting, growing. You know, from seed from seed to, to plate. Really, you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, catch you later boys and girls. Bye. We love you all. Keep growing your heads down. We'll catch you in the week. Bye bye now.